So welcome to part four of 3D and After Effects. Um, this is another important lesson. We're going to take a look at pre-comping and collapse transformations. So I've got this uh, simple scene set up. I've got a couple of uh, solids and they're 3D. And I've got a camera attached to a camera null, parented, um, it's basically parented to this camera null. So if I hit R for rotate, I can actually uh, rotate around this 3D scene. So as you can see, I've got a green uh, solid, a red solid and a blue solid, just kind of arranged uh, randomly. And I have two spotlights. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-comp these solids together. So I'm going to select all three here and I'm going to hit Control Shift C to pre-comp everything together. I'm just going to call it pre-comp one. OK. And as you can see now, something's happened. It's basically just collapsed down into 2D. And if I use my camera null to rotate through the scene, it's uh, not reacting. You can see these kind of 3D lights rotating, but uh, this pre-comp is 2D now. And if I go inside the pre-comp, uh, everything inside of the pre-comp is 3D. But uh, when it gets up to this uh, comp one layer, everything's uh, collapsed down to 2D. So in this situation, if you want it to respect uh, the 3D spaces of everything, uh, you might want to use this collapse transformation icon here. So I'm just going to click this uh, box here and you'll notice we get this kind of spiky uh, ball icon. So now basically, even though um, everything's inside of this pre-comp, it's respecting the 3D positions of these uh, separate 3D layers. And now we're back to uh, the beginning where we can actually rotate this 3D object. So this is a good way of keeping your uh, work organized in large projects. Um, it's a very useful workflow tip. So I'm just going to go back to this pre-comp here and I'm going to comp everything again inside of this pre-comp. So I'm going to hit Control Shift C and call this pre-comp 2. And as long as we keep uh, ticking this uh, collapse transformations box, it doesn't matter uh, how many times we pre-comp it. As long as we uh, tick this collapse transformations uh, box um, right at the top comp, we're still going to get that uh, 3D effect. So lastly, I'm just going to create another uh, 3D solid separate from the pre-comp. I'm just going to make it blue and I'm going to make it 3D, put it at the top here uh, on top of everything else. And I'm just going to move it, say, to about here. Uh, one thing to bear in mind is as soon as you apply any effect or mask or even a track mat to this pre, uh, 3D pre-comp, um, the behavior, the way it interacts with other uh, 3D layers is going to change. So if I just add like a blur to this pre-comp, suddenly this uh, 3D blue solid pops to the top. And if I move it to the bottom of the pre-comp, it's now um, behind. So it's almost as if this pre-comp is uh, being rendered down into 2D and, uh, and then it's kind of looking at uh, other layers. And the only way to make this uh, pre-comp interact again with other 3D solids is to completely uh, remove the effect. So even if I hide the effect, it's still not behaving in the way it should. So if I delete it fully, now it's kind of back to uh, interacting with other uh, 3D solids in the scene. So it's just something to bear in mind. So we're going to carry on 3D and After Effects in part 5. Um, if you found this useful, please share it. And thanks for watching.